educators. Today we're going to talk about a category of disability that has received increased media attention, I think really just over about the last 10 years or so, autism and children, teens, learners with autism spectrum disorders. On slide two, you'll see there's a link to a video. The video was shown on television on a program called What Would You Do? I'd like you to watch the video and I'm wondering what your reaction might be if you saw someone like the mean diner this picture and what he did. Would you speak up like some of these people did or would you figure that's not your business? Hmm, watch and think about it. I would like to think that we would all react in a way that would be pleasing to Jesus. Note this verse from Luke. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father is also merciful. That when we see some with autism, we realize that they're deserving of some mercy and respect in spite of the fact, or because of the fact, that they have a disability. Well, what is autism? Now, here's the technical term for it. A pervasive developmental disorder involving communication and social skills. Remember again that we're pervasive. That means it's an all-encompassing kind of disorder that occurs when someone is young and stays with them their entire life. A person may be in a range from mildly to severely autistic. What about their IQs? Well, Click on this, it's a summary of a much longer report, and read and see what this study found about the IQs of people with autism. Probably want to take a couple notes about that. Hmm. Here's something that's on a post that's usually pretty political of a website, but I decided to include it because it has some wonderful photos and some information about children who have autism. So click on that and scroll down and look at what the parents are saying. On slide 7 you see that autism usually begins to appear or become apparent to be recognized around ages 3 to 5. Um, far, far, far more boys are diagnosed with autism than girls about four times more boys. Um, it's a condition, again, where people have trouble maintaining social relationships. They often won't look at you when you're talking to them. Uh, may engage in repetitive behaviors such as shaking the hand and staring at it, rocking in their seat or rocking even if they're just sitting on the floor. Um, seem to be kind of obsessed with holding certain objects or feeling certain items and you take that item away and oh you will pay because if that's how I get my security and that's how I get my comfort you better not leave the house mom and dad without my fuzzy cat toy because if you do all of a sudden I'm going to realize it's not with us and I am going to break loose in the worst tantrum you've ever seen and you will go back to the house and get the fuzzy cat because I need it so that I can be calm when I'm going into a new situation, going somewhere, riding in the car. And that's just one example. Children often are said to have a lack of spontaneity, meaning if you say, okay, now let's go outside and play, they may not want to do that. Or now we're going over to the park and we're going to see Susie from your Sunday school class. Don't feel like going. I'm very engrossed right now in playing with this little tub of beans that you gave me. And I am not going anywhere. So that kind of takes some of the fun out of things. But now all autistic children do not have all of these characteristics. But many do. What causes autism? That's on slide nine. These are some of the, a couple of the major ideas right now that it could be some kind of toxins. Uh, that children are getting, whether it's through water, through their milk, through the formulas, uh, something that the parent has ingested if the mother is breastfeeding. We don't really know for sure. There's been more research done lately in the area of genetics and the fact that it's possible that some abnormalities in the chromosomes 
may be causing autism, particularly in the case of the father. It seems that boys are inheriting more if fathers have certain abnormalities in a chromosome. Also, if a father is older, like over 40 years old, it seems to be more likely that a child may be born with autism. Not always, but it's just the percentage of children with autism is higher um, if the father is over age 40. There's been a lot said over the years about vaccines, shots, immunizations, giving children autism. Most of the current research, though, says this is not true and there is no link between immunizations and autism. Modern theorists now say that since autism begins to rear its head, if you will, around age three to five, which is the same age that children are getting uh, uh, many immunizations that they need, people think there's a correlation when actually that's just about the time people would become more social, more verbal, interact more, play more with others, etc. And so it's a mere coincidence. Well, you can research that and form your opinion. The next video gives you some tips having to do with autism, and that's on slide 10. And after you've watched that, then go on to 11. Let's talk about Asperger's syndrome. You may have heard of that one. Generally speaking, it's known as a higher type of autism where the person may speak in a stilted manner. Their voice really doesn't uh, modulate that much. Person may have a very, what's called a very flat affect, A-F-F-E-C-T. In other words, the physical look of their face. They do not seem to register emotion quite as much as you would expect. In other words, if something is very exciting, um, let's say it's a teen with Asperger's syndrome, and their high school wins the state championship in basketball, the teenager may say, wow, that's really great. I think it's wonderful that the team won. While all the classmates who come back to school the next day are jumping up and down and yelling and very excited about this great accomplishment. That child doesn't visually appear to be that excited, but he really may be for him. Uh, people with autism can do average work, below average work, or above average work. Children with Asperger's, though, which is just one type of autism, usually do average to above average work, will be employable, and make them live on their own and get married and, and raise children when they're an adult. One thing you do need to know, the recent version of the APA manual has kind of removed Asperger's syndrome as one part of autism. Seems to be kind of a political move because a lot of parents wanted uh, that label, if you will, to show that, oh, my child is smarter than some other people's children who have autism. I mean, that's sort of making it a real simplified case. But when you look in a lot of manuals now, you won't see the term Asperger's syndrome, but people out in practice in the schools and things will still say that. So that's why I wanted you to know that what the term is. Um, why do you think the incidence of autism is increasing so rapidly? I want you to do a little research. Look online. See if you can find some articles about this, about how more people now are being identified with autism than, say, 15 years ago or 20 years ago. And come to class ready to talk about that and what you found. Well, what can help people with autism? Things like structure, knowing this is the school day, this is what's going to happen when I first get to school, and this is what happens second period, third period, and so forth throughout the day. If you have a child with autism in your class, if there are going to be any big changes that day, you want to let the child know. For instance, let's say you are forewarned, though you aren't always, but you might be forewarned, there's going to be a fire drill. Well, you would talk to that child in private and say, now we're going to have a fire drill, and it's going to be a very loud noise, but it's okay for you to cover your ears because the noise is bothering you. That's all right. But when we have the fire drill, we have to walk outside. That way we'll get further away from the loud warning sound. Or maybe the child brings earplugs to school. You could say you might want to put in your earplugs because the sound's going to be loud. That way, when the alarm goes off, it won't upset you so much. But again, have those kind of conversations privately so the child is not embarrassed. 
Having a lot of patience. Children with autism sometimes need things repeated more than once, or they may need written procedures so they'll know what's going to happen in the classroom. They also need a lot of practice with social skills, things like how to meet others, how to make friends, what are things to, that are okay to talk about in school, that it's okay to shake people's hand or give them the old fist bump if they'd rather do that than shake hands. Um, help the child practice through role playing, things that, you, things that you might normally do like asking for a particular food item in the cafeteria or um, talking to friends about sports or something like that. And again, knowing that, okay, maybe my area of great interest is baseball statistics. Well, everyone in my class does not want to hear me talk about baseball statistics every single day. If the teacher is talking about the crown kings of Europe, that's not a time to talk about baseball statistics. <laughs> and so you have some humorous things happen sometimes when you have to kind of tell the child, okay, now we'll talk about that later, or you can talk to your good friend about that at recess, but right now we got to focus on our work. Uh, and eventually the children kind of get to understand that the person is a little bit different. But, but they'll learn patience by watching you, teacher. So make sure that you exhibit it when you're dealing with people with special needs, and particularly those with autism. There are four methods that are mainly used to help people with autism. I want you also to come to class ready to talk about what are these four methods, what do they mean, what kinds of strategies or, strategies or methods are used in all of these? Look on slide 16 now. You see LAVAS, the TEACH method, the PEX method, and inclusion. Do a little research online and write some notes. What are the good things about these? And what maybe are the bad things or negatives about using one of these techniques or strategies? Then decide which one you think is best and why, and come to class prepared to talk about that. Here's a slide that just gives you a few of the negative points, but you'll want to explain those by research you've done. Some people say that Le Le the Lavasse method um, just turns children into little robots where they're just following one word commands and things, and it's really not a nice way to bring up a child. Some say that the teach method isolates children. If you work with a child one-on-one -on -one all the time, when is he or she going to know how to interact with others, and especially with other children? Um, the PEX method, of course, uses pictures. So some people say you're not teaching the child to talk or speak enough if the child's able. And with the inclusion method, of course, regular class teachers may not have the training and know how to work with the child, or the child may be a distraction to others. But remember, you need to look those up and put down other things that you may find. Don't just copy what's on this slide. Well, autism is a puzzle. But by working with children who have that special need, you may be able to help put the pieces together. Now, this symbol, puzzle pieces, is often used um, in, when you see things like uh, media events or publications or things on websites having to do with autism. That's sort of the international symbol that we're trying to put the pieces together to help a child be successful and have a good life. Here's some extra credit for you. Read these pages in your text so that you understand these terms. Pick one of these, write a little bit about it, and then explain a skill or standard that you would try to teach a child. Explain what you think the problems might be in helping the child learn it readily, and then what would you do? And type that up. Less than a page is fine. Tell what you would do to try to help